uh, Junior the real deal more. Um, I started boxing at the age of 10 years old. Um, I couldn't afford uh, to continue the sport of hockey uh, after my parents ended up having a divorce. So my mom uh, decided that it was a good time to put me into the sport of boxing and uh, really took uh, uh, a newfound love to the sport of boxing and ended up getting a lot of success as a young amateur boxer and uh, became a national team member at the age of 18 and represented Canada um, um, all over the world and uh, was very successful as a young amateur boxer and unfortunately ended up uh, spending some time in prison and uh, ended up uh, wasting four years of my life. Unfortunately, uh, went to jail and uh, and uh, completely back on the, the right track now and uh, pursuing uh, my uh, professional boxing career. I'm Canadian light heavyweight champion right now. and. Uh, Looking forward to uh, continuing uh, pursuing my uh, career as a professional boxer. Uh, Junior is a very hardworking guy. He is uh, he he is serious, and I think that it's very good boxer because he was amateur champion of the Canada a couple of years ago, and uh, his boxing is real. Uh, like art and I, I like what he's doing and he working very hard with me, very, very, very hard. We're doing a lot of liftings, a lot of plyometrics, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, sprints, a uh, lot of uh, ups and all this stuff and he's, he's, he, he, he's, he's, uh, he's a very, very, very uh, hard working guy and he wants to succeed. Sparring at the uh, boxing club really helps me when I'm training with all sorts of different uh, sparring partners. Um, I have uh, about four or five different sparring partners when I'm training for a fight who help me prepare. Um, they come in for one round at a time and um, I try to encourage them to give it all they can and so that I'm getting the best benefit out of it. And so I go through about you know, three or four sparring partners uh, in uh, one sparring session where I'm going for maybe 10 rounds straight and they're maybe coming in maximum two rounds at a time. So it really improves my conditioning and uh, I have some good sparring. A lot of guys that come um, from other boxing clubs, they come to um, our boxing club to get some of the better sparring with me and another boxer, Robert Cousins, who um, I work with a lot and is a really good up and coming uh, amateur boxer, Canadian champion right now. So, um, and you know, I always believe you surround yourself with good people and um, you know, the, uh, you are what you, you hang around and so you surround yourself with champions like Manny Sobro, you know, Robert Cousins and things like that. I think it's uh, only a good road for success. Junior has been coming to Richmond Hyperbaric since January of 2008. Um, he first came here when his trainer asked him to get some oxygen to help him with his breathing problem and his fatigue, also like bruises after training. So he normally comes here for um, treatment like a, a month or two months before his fight. And normally it's like once a week, uh, but closer to the game, he'll be coming sometimes two times a week. He has also been doing massage um, in combination with uh, hyperbaric treatment as um, he finds that massage and hyperbaric in combination has really speed up his uh, healing um, because the massage promotes a circulation in the injured area and the two really works well together. Uh, Junior's come a long way um, in his boxing career, winning the Canadian champion, amateur champion, win, winning the Canadian professional light heavyweight title, and uh, 
his future is really bright. I think Junior, uh, with the Canadian title, he can get into a North American title belt. And if there's anyone that deserves it, it would be Junior, because he works super hard. Uh, he's so dedicated to the sport, and uh, couldn't happen to a be more, more, more beautiful person. And uh, Junior really puts his life and heart, heart and soul into this uh, sport. And uh, I wish the best for him. And I think he'll have a great uh, opportunity to contend with some of the top 10 guys very soon. Um, personally, what I would like to accomplish as a professional boxer, um, as I'm you know, 31 years old now, um, I don't have much time left. I'm ranked number 16 by the NABF and number 40 by the WBC, so um, I do see me uh, winning a world title, and that's definitely something that I'd like to work towards. I think I have the ability and the commitment and the determination to do that. Um, and when I basically, every time I walk in that ring, um, I, um, I think the gym is, is where the fight is won. And people um, really forget that, is your preparation for that one night of fighting is so important. And that's something that I learned from Manny Sobral, is that your preparation is so important and that the training should be harder than the fight. And uh, that's something that I uh, make sure I do every single time so that when I walk in that ring, I'm 110% confident that I'm not going to get tired. And by me not feeling that I'm going to get tired um, gives me the confidence that I can fight um, for three minutes of every single round. Um, and that's my style. I'm a pressure fighter. I come try to break you down, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully I can be a world champion in the next few years. So basically, um, December the 12th of uh, 2000, um, about 5.30 at night, um, at, at about uh, in winter, uh, it gets dark roughly about 5, you know, 5.30 in the, uh, in the uh, evening. So it was starting to get dark at about that time and my brother and I and my little cousin were in this vehicle right here. Um, not right here, but we were sitting right here and we were pulling up and uh, turning into this direction, we're turning left and the opposing vehicle was uh, coming down this way and was also turning that way. And uh, as they pulled in, uh, pulled in front of me, I, um, my car was facing this way and they came along like this. My lights shined into their vehicle and uh, obviously I was able to see into the vehicle and I seen some of uh, uh, rival members uh, of uh, another uh, group of guys that were uh, on that side and I uh, were the familiar faces to me so we ended up pulling both down the, down the road and uh, basically a shootout ensued and uh, one of the vehicles ended up um, smashing into that house over there and the employees basically just scattered and uh, everybody uh, some people went running this way, some people went running that way, so it was uh, pretty interesting, the police right there. And uh, yeah, it was a night that definitely changed my life forever. And uh, like I said, not something I'm proud of, but unfortunately it happened. And uh, uh, but this is where it all went down, December the 12th of 2000.
think the reason why Junior turned his life around was for the love of his family. And he was tired of um, always looking back. You know, like we told him that he'd always have to look behind him, no matter where he went, if he stayed with the gang. And um, he wanted to lead a straight life. And actually, one of the gang members told him that that was no life for him, that the boxing was his life, and to leave and do what he had to do. My parents were out of town at the time when Junior got arrested, so um, I think one of my relatives were the ones to inform them. Initially, they were quite upset. I did need them, because the vehicle was registered in my mom's name, I actually needed my mom to send some paperwork to me in order to get the vehicle out of police custody. So, you know, of course she wasn't, she was very upset and not really wanting to do that for me. Um, also, I guess they were, my parents really did not want me to continue on in a relationship with Junior. They had never met him, but they were, all they saw were all these negative things and saw Junior getting into trouble. And I think I just sort of stuck by him thinking, I think something inside always knew that my parents never really, I just knew in the back of my in the back of my mind that one day when my parents would, would get the chance to meet Junior, that they would see him for not just this, you know, all these negative things and the sort of brief stint that he was involved in. I think that I knew they would see him for who he was and get to see the good person that he was and see how he was so big hearted. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Miller, this message is for you when you're about uh, 10 years from now. Your father would just like to tell you how much you've inspired dad to change his life and how rewarding it is to finally change your life and you get a beautiful daughter like this and they just keep coming. So happy to have her and uh, hope I can make a real good promising life for her and be a good role model for her. Robin's relationship um, with Junior during the time that he spent in prison uh, was somewhat, um, we knew that it existed and we knew that she was going out to visit him at Stony Mountain, uh, but we were still, or I was still hopeful that um, it wouldn't go anywhere. I wasn't sure when he would get out of jail, and I knew that she had to move on with her life. At that particular time, she did take a job with a company in Toronto, and I encouraged her to move to Toronto and try to, um, move away from Junior and what he had represented. Um, the trial and all the reports in the paper and TV were the hot topic in Winnipeg and um, you know it, it, it was all very foreign to us and our family and I really wanted Robin to have you know a better life, a life um, that had much more meaning and purpose to it. Well, first meeting Junior, I felt very awkward because uh, I wasn't sure that this was the man that I wanted for my daughter. Uh, I felt, as I say to repeat myself, very awkward not knowing how to say to him that he was not the person I wanted in her or our lives. But on the other hand, there was something about Junior, it's the way he spoke with tears in his eyes and the way he hugged me, if you know Junior, you'd understand exactly what I'm trying to say. There was just something about him that touched me. And that something led something very important to happen in the future, to cause changes in our minds regarding Junior. I don't, I never really questioned whether or not I was going to wait for Junior while he was in prison. I, I mean, I fell in love with Junior and, you know, I never really saw him as a criminal. I think it was, I don't think that was really who he was. I think that was more 
a group of guys wanting him to be that. I don't think that was really ever who Junior was, which is why probably he wasn't too successful at it. Um, you know, he just, I think once you get to meet him and you, you see what he's all about, you know, you, you start to see that he's just, he's just a big teddy bear and he's got a big heart and a heart of gold and he, he really cares about people. And, you know, I was able to see that all. Um, and I had no questions of whether or not I was going to stick by him or see him through, you know, while he was in prison, no matter how long it took. And it was definitely difficult when you, you definitely get to see who your real friends are when you're there because a lot of people forget about you out of mind, out of sight, you know, and there was other than Junior's parents and close family, it was, it was very difficult. There was just a handful of us that actually went and saw Junior on a regular basis and were there for all his phone calls. Every time he would call, you know, when I was at work, every time he'd call, he would only have a half an hour phone call. So of course, you know, you, whatever you were doing in that day, you would want to make sure you stopped to be able to talk to him when he had that half an hour phone call. So it definitely made life difficult, but there was definitely no questions that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been there for him. Feels like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Oh, Chad Bursing. Yeah, so everybody always wonders, like, well, why do you fight the way you do? This is why I fight the way I do, because, like, like, see these things here? These are, like, cinder block walls. That's why you never see me on the ropes too often, because uh, I remember sparring with one of my friends, Roberto Romero, punched him, and his head smacked off the wall. <laughs> so, you know, we never... Uh, we never, uh, this boxing club never seen too many fighters fighting off of the ropes too often. Because this is our ring right here. We didn't have no ring. <laughs> you just boxed right in here. You know? Hey, Reggie? No, oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Every club well, has a ring. Well, once again, with uh, what happened with, with uh, Junior um, being involved with the wrong group of people, well, and as a young kid growing up, those are the people that he looked at as, as friends. So once we separated and things happened, we kept in touch over the phone. And after everything was said and done, when Junior came back to Winnipeg and we started hooking up, I tell him the best thing he can do is probably leave Winnipeg. He indicated to me that he was gonna be moving out of Winnipeg with his uh, fiance or girlfriend, if you call it, wanna call her that. And um, he asked me which was the best club in Vancouver to go to. So we talked about different clubs and he hooked up with Manny and I think that was the best thing that ever happened to him. So right now, in terms of uh, where his career is right now, based on his, his past history, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better Cinderella story. So I think Junior is on the right, right path right now. If, if he continues to go that way, who knows how far he's going to get in the sport. The dedication that it takes to become an elite, elite athlete really involves pushing yourself to your limit and fighting the, the urge to quit. So nowadays, he's got, uh, he's got the belt, he's going to show it to you guys. He's a light heavyweight champion of Canada, ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Jr. Moore. Well, definitely, um, I, my, for myself, what, what the things that I did in my life, um, was I surrounded myself with um, good me. people yeah. and um, I morning, uh, just folks. made changes of uh, the people that I hung around with. Um, not to say that the people um, that I hung around with before were, um, you know, um, influencing me to do anything because I always believe that, you know, you should be responsible for the decisions you make and uh, for the friends you choose. And I don't think you should blame your friends or blame anybody for the, you know, the mistakes you make. So, 
you know, when I did ask for a second chance from, you know, uh, my father-in-law and to, to give me a job at, at his place of business and basically to have a, a relationship with his daughter, I, I made some promises to him that, you know, I was no longer going to associate with uh, the friends that I associated with before and that, you know, I wasn't uh, going to be doing drugs and being doing um, uh, drinking and partying and I was going to be a responsible person and so, um, I also uh, made a deal um, and I have to live up to it and, um, and one thing he's taught me is keeping your word is very important and so I'm very grateful that Marshall and Jules gave me a second chance and uh, gave me an opportunity and uh, I'm just trying to make the best of it. Yeah, so basically I, um, um, you know, enjoyed uh, uh, a great life as, a, as growing up. Uh, you know, my mother did the best job uh, and father did the best job that they could uh, raising uh, my brother and I. I have two older brothers and uh, uh, one younger brother who uh, unfortunately uh, ended up uh, passing away at the age of uh, about 20 years old uh, from leukemia. He actually passed away from uh, the chemotherapy. Um, and uh, um, after I uh, committed this crime uh, that I ended up spending four years in prison for, um, I, I was with my brother that night that I uh, did the uh, shooting and uh, we came home and uh, uh, everything that went down ended up happening. Um, you know, um, he had said, uh, you know, don't do it. And so, you know, uh, I ended up doing it obviously. And, uh, you know, uh, right before I was to get sentenced to, to prison, um, my brother ended up passing away from uh, the complications of the chemotherapy. And, uh, you know, I really realized that, um, you know, how hurt I was and how I just couldn't understand why my brother, you know, why him, why did this happen to our family, you know, all these things and I was very hurt and devastated and to realize, I uh, also came to realize that, you know, um, here I am, I almost did that to a family by, you know, them, you know, if I would have killed the individual that I shot, you know, um, here I am, you know, um, almost taking someone's life and here I lost my brother and I really seen the value of life and I realized that life is so short and you know what you, you should not be the person to, you know trying to take someone's life it's just life is way too short and for you to even think of doing that is you know it, it just boggled my mind and, and uh, um, right then and there that's where I decided that I wanted to change my life um, after realizing that, you know, my brother was only on this earth for 20 years and he didn't even get to experience anything and here I am wasting my life in prison. So um, I spent 27 months in solitary confinement so um, I had a lot of time to think about what I did and, uh, you know, um, I, I miss my brother every single day. and. Uh, um, every day there's a blue sky, uh, I think of him because that's his uh, Indian name, is blue sky. And uh, so whenever I do see a blue sky, I, I definitely think of my brother and uh, uh, I fight with him in my heart when I box and, uh, and in my everyday, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that happen in my life day to day, you know, that, you know, what doesn't break you only makes you stronger. I lost my last fight doesn't mean, you know, uh, life's over. Uh, it's, uh, you gotta learn from your mistakes and move on and uh, ready to fight the next battle. And, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, I have great support from uh, family and friends here in Vancouver. And, uh, you know, um, your support system is very crucial in you uh, turning your life around and it's never too late to turn your life around. Uh, you know, everybody had said that I was washed up from boxing and all these things, and uh, here I am, Canadian Light Heavyweight Champion, and uh, moving on to bigger and better things uh, every day. Uh, now I'm going to speak to some youth out of prison, at a youth detention center, instead of, 
you know, the, uh, uh, going to prison, I'm going to be going to prison, I'm leaving prison. You know, that's something that I've never done. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to all these great things happening in my life uh, that are just endless. So I'm very grateful and thankful uh, uh, to the sport of boxing that's been uh, helping me uh, straighten out my life and hopefully I can help somebody straighten out theirs.